So you've decided to add a welder to your shop and you want it to be a MIG welder. MIG welding is a really great and easy to learn process that you can use in all sorts of different applications from furniture to structural and repairs, all stuff like that. But there are literally hundreds of options on the market and a lot of them say flux core slash MIG or just MIG or just flux core and you have no idea what the difference is. Well, today we're gonna talk about that and I'm gonna show you the difference between a flux core weld and a MIG weld and explain why you might want one over the other. So my first welder that I bought was a $125 welder from Harbor Freight that was just flux core. And you know the saying, if it's too good to be true, it probably is. Well, when every other welder was about 500 bucks at the time, the $125 option, I thought this is crazy, but I need to be able to weld, so I'll take a chance. That thing wasn't great. It stuck metal together, but now we have much better machines and the markets changed dramatically. So I get a lot of messages on my Instagram on what kind of welder someone should buy and if they really need the gas portion of MIG welding. And there's a general confusion as to MIG welding versus flux core welding and whether or not they're the same or how they differ. Now the real big difference is that MIG welding has gas in the name. MIG stands for metal inert gas. So that's that noble gas that comes in the tank that you see on the back of a welder, and that actually shields the weld area so that it doesn't get attacked by oxygen and corrode, create porosity. When you flux core weld, the similar gas that's being put out through the tank in a MIG weld is actually being created through the combustion of that wire and the flux burns off and creates a similar shielded pocket and then creates slag uh, and allows your weld to be protected from the oxygen through that extreme heat. Now there are pros and cons of both and a lot of people are intimidated by the gas, so let's get right into it, and I'm gonna show you the difference between welds and setup with a flux core welder and a MIG welder, and show you why you should probably opt for a machine that does both. All right, so here's a great entry-level MIG machine. This is a Lincoln Power MIG 140 MP. The MP stands for multi-process, so this machine can actually do a couple of other weld processes as well, stick and TIG, but we're just gonna talk about MIG and flux core today. So in my hand, I've got some flux core wire, but in the machine I have MIG wire. Again, there's a difference between the wire you'll use if you're gonna be flux welding or MIG welding. Now this machine in particular, it doesn't care what wire is in it. You can do flux core or MIG welding, and the reason it can do that is because it has what's called a gas solenoid in it, and I can hook a gas bottle up to it if I wanna use standard traditional MIG welding. Now if you buy a machine that's just a flux core welder, it's likely not gonna have a gas solenoid, so you're only ever gonna be able to use flux core wire. I'm gonna switch the flux core wire in now because I know that that's where a lot of people start. I'm gonna do some welds with that and then we'll switch it back over to the MIG weld and I'll show you the difference. By the way, when you're switching wires, if you cut it over at the tip, you can just roll it back and you don't waste any wire. Okay, so if you've ever seen a MIG welder before and a MIG welding gun, you've probably seen it with this nozzle tip on the front. Now this is really only designed to direct gas flow. There are little holes in the front of this that direct your MIG gas. Now if you're flux core welding, you actually don't need that and you wanna put this little nozzle on there, which is actually kind of nice because you can get into tighter to reach places than you can with the gas nozzle. So if you're flux core welding, you can just have it set up like this. It's the same contact tip. And like I said, we've got our self-shielded wire in there. And we're gonna do a couple of test welds. So I've set up these little blocks here and we're gonna be using some inch and a half by inch and a half by one eighth inch wall tube for our test. Now this is just a nice test because this is easy to replicate in furniture, in shelving. It's pretty structural. It's good for kind of holding weight if you wanna make a desk or you wanna make a chair. Uh, this is pretty normal stuff that I'll use on furniture and decorative projects in my shop. Just like anything, our fixturing and our clamping is really important. And I beveled my tube before we did this weld. I actually burned through a little right there because flux core welds happen to be a little hotter than regular MIG welds and I didn't realize that my heat was too high. I'm 
much better settings on that second weld. So with the welds done, I'm gonna go right over to the grinding bench. We'll grind this out flat. We can see what this looks like after it's ground if you were to be making this a decorative piece and you wanted this to be perfectly smooth for paint. So I've got some little pits from where my flux core dug in a little bit too far. My heat was a little high. I'm gonna go back, do a quick bead over that so that we can grind it flush and have it nice and good for paint. All right, so with a little touch-up welding, I was able to get 99% of those low spots gone. And if I were to keep messing around with this, I could get this perfectly flat. Uh, and if I was gonna paint this, a lot of these will actually fill with paint and be unnoticeable. So that's the flux core weld of this, call it a furniture joint. Now let's reset the machine for MIG welding, do this again, and we'll see the difference. So let's talk a little bit about what happened with the flux core weld before we switch over to the MIG weld. So with flux core, again, no gas, but it's very smoky, very bright, and it runs pretty hot. Now I'm in a well ventilated shop with a fume extractor, but if you're gonna flux core weld, you have to be in a well ventilated area. Any flux core welder is gonna tell you that you can't do it inside. This is not the kind of thing where you wanna just go down in your basement and fill it with smoke. The smoke is basically poison, so you'll be making yourself sick unless you ventilate that smoke out. So I always recommend if you're gonna weld inside with flux core, do it in your garage, leave the garage door open, maybe have a fan kind of just pushing the air out so you're not just letting it linger and get all up in your face or use a fume extractor. Um, now, I'm not the greatest flux core welder, I wouldn't uh, ever say that I am. And you could tell in that I had to do two passes because the first one, the penetration was just a little too hot. I'd actually fill some holes and it took me a little while to get my machine set just right. But once I did, I was able to create a weld that once I ground it, it actually looked nice and smooth and I could have gone to paint. So now we're gonna switch over to the MIG weld, which uses the gas. We're gonna use the nozzle on our actual uh, MIG gun and it's gonna make a big difference in the quality of our weld that we get the first time. So let's go ahead and do that. It's also worth noting that I didn't disconnect my gas bottle from the machine when I went to the flux core. I just turned the gas off and the machine obviously wasn't able to put out any gas if the valve was shut. Now the MIG wire we're using is on a bigger spool so we have to put the adapter on our machine. Most machines come with an adapter like this this is a 12 and a half pound spool versus I think it's like a two pound spool for the flux core. So we're switching back to our gas nozzle for this, same contact tip, and then we can use the inside of the machine, the chart, to figure out what our weld settings are supposed to be. So same exact weld condition, we've got some inch and a half by inch and a half square, eighth wall, and we're gonna be just welding an outside corner like we did before. For anybody interested, my new welding table that I've got here, this is a 5 by 10 Sigmund Imperial Plus. It's beautiful, it's got a super hard coating on it. And I'm using the fixture blocks to fixture everything up and my clamps keep everything nice and tight. This will basically make this weld mitt stay perfect and not move from the heat of the weld. First weld's a little cold. I'm gonna turn my machine up to do the second side. Much better. Terrible outside corner weld. Whew, it's okay. We'll fix that all up with the grinder. Very clean, no slag, no real need to use the wire brush, but we'll take this over to the grinding bench and grind this out and see how it looks. All right, so I've got a cold first weld, a terrible outside corner, and a pretty good uh, second weld. But with MIG welding, you're gonna see just how forgiving this is and how much less we're gonna to have to do after we grind this because the process is just a little bit cleaner with that solid wire. So let's start with the cold weld, then we'll do that terrible outside corner. All right, so immediate effects. Grinding down that cold weld, that's perfectly smooth, perfectly flat essentially ready for paint with a little more prep. Let's do that outside corner.
All right, look at that. From a terrible looking weld to a really clean corner, just a couple of seconds. Last but not least, let's do this uh, good penetrating and well set weld, grind that one flush, and then this piece is done. All right, three sides looking super clean, basically ready for paint right there, done uh, in essentially one step versus the flux core, which had a little more work. I had to go back, weld it a second time, have a little bit of pits in there. But for all intents and purposes, you can wind up with essentially the same result using MIG or flux core. So let's wrap this up. All right, so that's the quick differences between a flux core weld and a MIG weld. And the difference really comes down to what you wanna buy that's gonna protect you for when you go into the next phase of your metalworking journey, right? So a lot of people get stuck and they spend a couple hundred dollars on a flux core machine. And then they realize that they wanna just have a little bit better of an experience or they wanna be able to have a cleaner weld, spend a little less time on their cleanup and a little less time on their kind of prep for paint work. So they move over to a MIG machine. Now, if you've only bought a flux core machine that can only do flux welding, you're not gonna be able to just hook gas up to any of those regular just flux core only welders. So my recommendation is get yourself a machine that can do flux core welding or MIG welding. And the way you'll know that if you're buying it used is if it has a port on the back that can accept gas. If it has that, it likely has a gas solenoid. Um, but you know, obviously do your research before you go ahead and purchase a machine. The machine I used in this video was a Lincoln 140 MP, which will do MIG, TIG, stick, and run a spool gun. It's a great first machine if you're looking to get into welding. And if you don't wanna have the expense of buying the gas bottle and dealing with that right from the beginning, you can just flux core weld for a while until you get a little more comfortable. Then you can make the investment in a gas bottle. You don't need anything huge. I'm using a very small, this is like a 60 or an 80 cubic foot bottle. It gets you a lot of trigger time and it'll really get a lot of welding done while you're first learning. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below and I'll put links down below to some of the tools I use in this video and hope to see you on the next one. Thanks.